Last time we witnessed this kind of event, the tenure of every elected governor for four years blessed us with life and health to witness. Alhamdulillah, by the special grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I assumed the mantle of leadership of our great state on May 29, 2003, taking over from His Excellency Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, having served his term of four years, from May 29, 1999, to May 29, 2003. And again, by his divine providence, I was re-elected to serve another term of four years, beginning from May 29, 2007, an unprecedented opportunity which I had the first privilege to enjoy. As is customary, with all administrations taking the mantle of leadership, we assumed office in 2003 with a clear mandate and mission of our party, the All Nigeria People's Party backed by the collective aspirations of our people as professed openly in their pre-election expressions. Thus, in our determination to set forth a credible blueprint to realize those aspirations, we, in consultation with all the relevant stakeholders, produced a transition report tagged Shikarau Transition Report 2003 which identified and collected those aspirations and proffered appropriate recommendations towards accomplishments. Our administration has accorded priority attention to Sharia implementation in keeping with the popular wish of Kano populace. In this regard, our administration found it desirable to establish a number of agencies to facilitate implementation of key programs so that Sharia can further take roots in the conduct of everyday life of Kano society. These agencies include the Sharia Commission as an apex body, the Hizba Board, Zakka and Hoopsi Commission, the Censorship Board improved upon an earlier establishment, Directorate of Societal Reorientation and Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Directorate. We also established a Majlis Shura, a 50-member forum of reputable and respected citizens of the state that meet every month to deliberate on issues of interest to the state and advise government accordingly. It has always been our vision to make Kano State better than we had met it. Thus, in every sector, we had improved on what we inherited. During our first term in office 2003 to 2007, we made human development our topmost priority. In our determination to make Kano one of the best managed states, we consistently pursued governance reforms in collaboration with all the development partners engaged in Nigeria. And when we were re-elected in 2007 for the second term, we improved on the gains of the first term by initiating the roadmap for economic development 
and it has since become the Kano State Roadmap for Development, which has been articulated with Vision 2020-20, initiated by the Federal Government of Nigeria. The Kano State Roadmap for Development, KSRD, 2010-2020, the product of that comprehensive effort, which is presented as Appendix A, is in my view a legacy document made possible by broad consultation with our citizens and key stakeholders of the state. It is a plan for the people of Kano State. It is a plan that has no party affiliation and it, has, it is a plan that symbolizes Kano State's contribution to Nigeria Vision 2020-20. The implementation plan comprising of programs for 2011 to 2013 is presented as medium sector strategy in Appendix B, as will be seen later. And it is my wish to bequeath it to the government of Your Excellency on this occasion of my handover. Our vision is for Kano State to be an economically vibrant and socially harmonious state that is guided by the universal principles of the Sharia. In the area of human development, we have improved school enrollment in all tiers of education. Enrollment figures in primary schools rose from 1,264,636 in 2003 to 1,972,101 in the year 2010, representing 48% increase, while in secondary schools the corresponding figures were 238,134 as at 2003, and as at today it is 433,888, representing 82% increase in that sector. Introduction of free tuition for girls in secondary schools, which in addition to other measures was responsible for increased enrollment by 64% in primary schools, an increase of 113% in secondary schools between 2003 and 2010. We have upgraded as many as 210 junior secondary schools and established 42 senior secondary schools and 551 junior secondary schools. We have implemented more projects in the education sector than any other state in the Federation and we have constructed more secondary schools than any other state in Nigeria today within the last eight years. Recognizing the fact that teacher provision is the most important factor in improving quality education at all levels, we increased the teaching staff in both primary schools from 25,999 in 2003 to 45,145 in the year 2010, which represents 74% increase in the teaching force at the primary school level. And correspondingly, for secondary schools, from 4,500 teachers in 2003 to 13,806 as of today, which represents 207 percent increase to ensure adequate provision of teachers to handle the teaching learning process in our schools. Similarly, provision of health personnel is the main ingredient towards improving health care delivery in all sectors of the health industry. Consequently, in 2003, there were 4,508 medical personnel in the state service. Additionally, 4,484 were recruited by our administration, which represents slightly over 100% increase of personnel to handle health care delivery. In 2003, there were only 130 doctors, 19 house officers, 1,104 nurses, 
1,187 health attendants. By the year 2011, our administration has recruited additional 342 medical doctors, 313 house officers, 702 nurses, and 1,487 health attendants, which significantly improve the health care delivery in the state. As exemplified, by 47% reduction in maternal mortality rate. We have established the first ever urology center in Nigeria. Over 50 secondary health facilities have been rehabilitated across the state and two major hospitals are currently under construction all towards improving health care delivery. Similarly, in the area of capacity building we have established postgraduate school of family medicine for training of resident doctors to become consultants and also a school of anesthesia for training of doctors and nurses in Murtala Mohammed Hospital and school of nursing in Gorzo respectively. Arrangements have also been concluded for the establishment of a faculty of medicine in Kano State University of science and technology. A University of Medicine is under construction in Bichi under a public-private sector partnership initiative. In the area of water supply, we have increased the installed capacity that we met on ground from 200 million liters per day to 425 million liters per day by establishing the famous 150 million liters per day Tambra water treatment plant, which is so far the largest of its kind in the West African sub-region, and the 75 million liters per day watery treatment plant commissioned a couple of weeks ago. With improved electricity power and pipelines from watery to greater Kano, there would be significant improvement in water supply in the metropolis. In addition to all of these efforts, we have also executed 110 water projects across the state at the total cost of over 12 billion naira. In the agricultural sector, which is the mainstay of our state's economy, we have facilitated the formation of 12,000 smallholder farmer groups across the state against 1,050 groups on ground as at 2003, through which improved agricultural technologies and input supports were passed over to 300,000 smallholder farmers annually. We have restored extension service by recruiting 450 additional extension staff. We have procured 300 thousand, over 300,000 metric tons of assorted fertilizers which were subsequently sold to farmers at highly subsidized price of 1,000 naira per bag. Detailed inventory of the 13 state-owned dams have been carried out preparatory to rehabilitating them and providing irrigation infrastructure in support of the concept of commercial agriculture. We have commenced rehabilitation works on Magaga Dam and the construction of 200 hectare Magaga irrigation project at the cost of 4.8 billion naira. Our efforts in agriculture have yielded fruit. Crop production has increased statewide from 1,900,000 from 1, metric tons in 2003 to 5 million metric tons by the May 2011. As government is a continuous business, we mobilized to complete all ongoing projects we inherited in 2003 and initiated over 300 new road projects. Many of the road projects have been completed and commissioned, while several others are at various stages of implementation. These roads projects include 121 roads in the metropolitan area, 
48 roads of 496 kilometer length in various parts of the state, 140 rural roads of 997 kilometer length, 20 bridges of 4.85 kilometer length, and design of 21 roads by consultants are on board. Carlos Tuarin image at the Center for Commerce and Industry entails that this subsector of the economy is accorded priority by any government. Consistent with our vision and stated objective to make Kano a formidable center of commerce in the country again by creating an enabling environment for manufacturing and commerce, our administration maintains unrelenting pursuit of those objectives. We have initiated the Kanawa Market Project which is purely a public-private sector partnership. Similarly, major markets have been rehabilitated. The first ever ICT park in Nigeria has been established at Gidan Adobairo to spur economic growth. At the inception of our administration in 2003, and taking into cognizance the, preval the prevalence of ethnic and religious intolerance as well as other social societal vices existing between and among the people living in the state, we understood and underscored the fact that the single most important contributing factor to this negative trait had been the inability of citizens to exercise their fundamental human rights, particularly the right to free speech and expression. We noted that denying citizens the right to express their views on governance as well as on other happenings in the society contributed greatly to the escalation of violence and destructive tendencies. Consequently, through the relevant agencies, the State Ministry of Information as well as the Directorate of Adedi Tosahu Program, the State Radio and Television Stations, and the Triumph Publishing Company and several other media, we created an enabling atmosphere for free expression of views and opinions in the state. This posture assisted greatly in maintaining peace in the state. The period 2003 to 2011 will remain an important period in the history of governance in our dear state as the most peaceful period. However, like any policy, this too has its own shortcoming. Even though free expression was allowed, unrestrained freedom of expression carried with it nonetheless the negative consequences of erosion of the virtues of restraint, civility, and of decorum. With regard to government finances, a total cumulative receipt into government coffers over the eight-year period beginning from May 2003 to date was in the sum of 497 billion 251 million 637,311.32 kobo. From this figure, initially generated internally generated revenue covering board of internal revenue and collections by Prostatals accounted for the sum of 54,963,018,202 and 12 kobo. As most of the Prostatals operate on contra entry basis, revenues accruing to them are spent on their routine operations and projects. It is important to highlight that the above receipts include the sum of 25,164,554 dollars out of the claim of 202,715,664 dollars filed by Mrs. Global Strastic Skills Consult Limited our consultants on behalf of the state against the federal government as amount wrongly deducted from the state allocations over the years in the course of foreign loans settlements. As of 27 May 2011, 
the sum of 81,704,959 dollars has been reconciled with the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, the Debt Management Office and the Consultants, as another money due to the state which can be paid any time from now. The consultant who was appointed in May 2010 is entitled to 20% of the recovered sum as success-based fees as per the agreement signed between the state government and the firm. A copy of the agreement will be attached to the handover notes. On the expenditure side, the total disbursement to each government agency, prostitutes, ministries, and all other sectors of the government covering recurrent and capital undertakings can be provided in greater details by the State Ministry of Finance. It is also relevant to highlight that due to certain exigencies of government, the Ministry of Finance maintains the following special accounts. There is the State Local Government Joint Account, the Joint State Local Government Project Account, the Interest Account. This is an account where all interests accruing from monies deposited in government banks are accumulated into one place, aligned with the dictates of the Sharia, and then afterwards decisions are taken as to what to do with the generated interest. Fixed deposit account, crown agents account, mainly foreign, sub-treasurer's account, and an EU special project account. As at May 27, 2011, there was a credit balance, credit bank balance of 4 million 361,000, sorry, 4 billion 361 million 905,917 and cash book balance of 5 billion 932 million 341,273.19 Kobo in the different accounts under the Treasury as detailed below in the handover details. The handover documents contain details pertaining to one policy thrust of our administration, financial report, accomplishment in some key areas, and, above all, challenges and suggestions on the way forward. The handover note is accompanied by reports from various MDAs providing details on the numerous accomplishments, prospects, and constraints. All other appendices to the handover note that will be signed are kept up in the office. It is hoped that these documents taken together should provide the required information by Your Excellency in charting an enviable course of our dear state. On this note, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to invite the incoming governor and my humble self to sign the handover notes.
Your Excellencies, that was the speech by the outgoing governor of Kano State and the signing of the handover note. Governor of Kano State, Malay Ibrahim Shikarau. Your Excellency, the incoming deputy governor of Kano State, Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduje, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by thanking Almighty Allah for showing us this day. Exactly eight years ago, we were here and uh, I was sitting on that seat and uh, we swapped exactly as we did now. Of course, I have to congratulate Malam Ibrahim Shekarao for, I'm sure he will still remember, for inviting me to come back after four years. Unfortunately, for one reason or the other, we couldn't make it. But it's always it's better later than never. Now, after eight years, what he mentioned is what we are seeing today. And of course, what has happened in the last eight years is a great history to all of us. It's a lesson. Especially what is happening right now. And uh, I believe it's a lesson that all of us must listen, must uh, analyze and see how best we can use the lesson that has been learned. And for me, it is a great pleasure really to serve this state in many capacities, both locally and outside the state. And I'm also happy that we are back again to government house in Kano and we will do whatever we can to improve the lives of our people. And we, we actually need the support of everybody in the states, those who are in PDP and all other party members and other political parties, and even the majority who have no parties at all. We want all hands on deck to ensure that this state is made a better place to live. And uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank everybody who is here and thank the entire people of this state who have given us this mandate to steer the steering of this great state for the next four years. And by the grace of God, we'll do whatever it takes to do exactly that. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you very much. No, we are coming, we are coming. We are, it's not yet over, please. Get seated.